Uh, my name is Dr. Jose Arturo Puga and for the purpose of this conversation, this presentation, I want to tell you all about language acquisition theory and how it relates to language acquisition. Uh, I want to tell you that according to Stephen Crash and his research, we all acquire language the same way. But it's something that in today's educational system, it sounds uh, just a little bit different. Why? Because we all think that, um, that we all have learning styles and that we have, that we learn with our left side of the brain, right side of the brain, and that we are unique uh, individuals in all aspects. And you know what? All of that is correct. We have different learning styles. We learn with the left side of the brain, the right side of the brain, and we all seem to have different ways of learning. But when it comes to second language acquisition, we all learn language the same way. Okay, a, a good example is, is, is eating. E eating, we all eat the same way. We take uh, intake uh, food through our mouth, it goes through our digestive system, and then it goes to different parts of our body. It is the same way in Latin America, it is the same way in Europe, it is the same way in Africa, in, in any, 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 any part of the world. Language acquisition is the same way. We, we have our visual system, which works the same way for all of us. And this is what we call in language acquisition, comprehensible input. Uh, and let me give you some examples of comprehensible input. Okay, I'm gonna divide this in two different lessons. Lesson number one, and for that I'm gonna turn into a different language. Lesson number one. Yo tengo una televisión en mi recámara. Y tengo una computadora en mi cocina. This means hardly anything to a person that is acquired a second language. How about if I repeat it several times? Yo tengo una televisión en mi recámara y tengo una computadora en mi cocina. If I continue to repeat it and repeat it, probably not. What about if I make the student repeat it? Probably not. What if I take some of the words and try to try to um, have him memorize some of the words? Probably not, because it has no significance to the student. Now, let me go into lesson number two. And for that, you need to can, you need to pay attention. Esta es mi mano. Esta es mi cabeza. Estos son mis ojos. Yo tengo dos ojos y no tengo tres ojos. As you can see, now it becomes comprehensible input. See how the individual receives comprehensible input um, based on, on, on visuals, based on, on, on things uh, that, that a student can comprehend, based on background knowledge. And now that you understand how the process works, let me tell you and let me just go back to my original statement. We all learn language the same way. We all acquire languages through messages, to comprehensible input. When we understand what people tell us, what people say, not how they say it, and now when they say it. We acquire language when we understand the message is being sent to us in a comprehensible input manner. If you know what is being said because of your background knowledge, because you have visuals, because you have um, you, the pictures in your brain, then it becomes comprehensible input. It may be a surprise to, to you, like it was to me, uh, talking or speaking is not language acquisition. It's comprehensible input. When we, when we go, through, we go through, through, through a period where where we, we listen and listen, and then eventually we, we utter language. And this is uh, what typically is called the silent period. Yes, students uh, need to go through a silent period. And now that we are familiar with the language acquisition process, and that we have been connecting it to, uh, to the listening and speaking, reading and writing, and of course uh, to the traditional identification of ELL students like beginners, intermediate, advanced and advanced high. I want to connect all of that by telling you a, a little story 
rather an experience. It was back in the 1990s when I was um, completing my military um, training in the RTC program that I was uh, looking for a job. I was looking for a job and I, I was trying to secure a job as a, uh, as a bilingual teacher. So I applied in different districts and I was able to get this sixth grade um, bilingual elementary teacher position and where I was uh, assigned uh, to some um, sixth graders that were beginners. Uh, more than beginners, they were what we recognize, and you probably know this, as newcomers. Newcomers to the district. It's basic students that are, uh, are trying to acquire a second language and they're in the beginning stage. Basically no English, so I wanted to make sure that uh, they were given the opportunity. Of course, this is the 1990s and I had no experience in language acquisition. I was not familiar with the, uh, with the process, so I was determined to, uh, to teach them how to speak English. So I, um, I, I implemented a few techniques. First, I started to, uh, to translate uh, to them, which it, it meant nothing to them because uh, some of them were, um, were this particular student, this uh, one sixth grade boy uh, from Korea, I started teaching him to repeat, uh, repeat after me. So I started asking, uh, uh, this is a ball, this is a pencil, uh, good morning. And of course he was, he was not repeating, that didn't work. I, uh, I tried by, uh, with small words like uh, ball, pencil, table, that didn't work either. I even tried to, um, to get a language out of him by, by stimulating in different ways, like for example, I'll uh, repeat the word ball and I'll give you the ball. <laughs> that didn't work either. So one week went by, two, three, up to five, six months, and then that's when the process began. Um, this one student, among other students, started to utter language. Uh, and I was asking myself, uh, what happened through all those three, four, five periods? Uh, now I recognize it with language acquisition process is what we know now as the silent, the silent period. See, there's, as we were talking about it in, in, in the presentation of language acquisition process, you go through the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Well, the listening and the reading is way to, to acquire language, and, and the speaking and the writing is the way to utter language, okay? So, so now we know that speaking is not language acquisition is, is uh, when you create comprehensible input for the students. So um, I started to create comprehensible input, of course, without knowing, I started to, to create activities, to create uh, visuals, to, to start working with other students, bring ideas, bring small clips, and so students started to utter language. So, so now we know that uh, they, they go through a silent period and then they start outputting the language. But if you want students to acquire a language, they don't need to, uh, to repeat words, to, to, uh, to practice in front of a mirror. They just need to listen and listen to comprehensible input. I want you to connect the language acquisition theory, the language acquisition process, in the traditional ways of identifying English learners in the classroom. Language acquisition process, we know that we need comprehensible input and that we need to emphasize the listening skills. And then recognize the language acquisition process, which is listening, speaking, reading, and writing, where input of the language comes from, which is the listening and the reading. And the output is the speaking and the writing and then transfer that to the classroom, which is beginners, intermediate, advanced, and advanced high. It is, it is, it is, it is a combination. The, 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 the beginners is the listening, the intermediate is the speaking, the, uh, the advanced is the reading, and the advanced high is the writing. Of course, if you're dealing with an advanced student, you not only concentrate on the reading, he already has experience with listening and speaking and reading. So you need to be practicing all three. And with the uh, intermediate student, you need to be practicing two. So, so the language acquisition process can have a natural flow. Okay? Blue horse.